All right, so case uh, six, maybe I should have chosen more boring entities so I wouldn't go off on all these tangents. All right, 30-year-old female with a brown firm arm nodule. And let me rotate this here. So here's another spindle cell lesion, like all of them. Spindle cells in the dermis, pushing down into the subcutis. Uh-oh, fat entrapment. What about DFSP? No, this is not a DFSP, and we've got a few clues to help us. Yes, there is involvement of the fat, but when we look closer, the fat where the area where the spindle cells are infiltrating kind of looks almost like there's some fat necrosis going on and some inflammation with it, as opposed to that real clean crunch down fat that was just completely enveloped by spindle cells. It's a little bit more messy fat involvement and it's kind of just at the periphery, right? It's like the tumor is just kind of trickling into the fat a little and, and pushing it out of the way, but not completely overrunning it like it was in that DFSP. No, we're not gonna look at the spindle cell cytology yet. That's the last thing we look at in this tumor, okay? The keys to the diagnosis are usually seen from low um, or me medium power. The second thing is look at the epidermis over the lesion. The epidermis is acanthotic. There's elongation of the reedy ridges compared to, here's normal at the side, normal-ish. And then as you get over the tumor, the reedy ridges come down and elongate. They kind of flatten out at the bottom or get kind of blunting or tabling is another name for it. See how they get kind of flat? It's like they came down and they hit a force field and they smashed against it and became flat. Sometimes it can be really flat. It's like the tumor is like telling them to stay back or something. Somehow it's the tumor that's making the epidermis grow. I don't exactly understand how or why. Probably something to do with cytokines, right? That's cytokines, I think, is always the answer if you don't know. That's what one of my attendings told me in med school. I thought it was pretty clever. Although one day I tried when I was on rounds with him to answer something that way, and he said, which cytokine? And I was like, ooh. So I got totally schooled when I tried to use his own trick against him. So anyway, those lessons learned. All right, so epidermal hyperplasia, some involvement of the fat in this case. Well, look at that. There's pigment. Oh, is it spindle cell melanoma? No, this is hemosiderin pigment, okay? And now I agree that right here, it's kind of hard to tell. Especially on a scan slide, you can't quite see that refractile golden uh, color as well. Uh, that's I love digital slides for so many reasons, but one of the things is that refractile texture that you can see by flipping your condenser on a light microscope. We lose the ability to do that really feasibly on a digital slide. So, so digital slides are not perfect. And look at this, scattered pleomorphism. So that is not usually gonna be seen in DFSP. These cells are much more plump and actually kind of more atypical than DFSP. We've got hemosiderin here. We've got these kind of haphazard and short fascicles of these plump, juicy spindle cells with some scattered atypia. Mitoses you often see in here. It pushes down into the fat a little bit. You know, here's some more of that kind of golden uh, looking. This is a little bit more golden, I think. So, but you could always do an iron stain if you wanted to. And if you did a CD34 here, what you'd see, I don't have this, uh, I don't think I did a stain on this one, but if you did, you would see the dermis normally stains with CD34. Try it out the next time you do a CD34, if you have a skin or something in your control tissue, look at the background dermis. It normally has a significant amount of CD34 positive dendritic cells that kind of colonize the dermis. And actually, if you see like an area where there's a fresh scar, the CD34 will be wiped out in that area because all those dendritic cells got cut out and, and now it's filled in with granulation tissue and all that will stain there is the vessels. It's really cool, try it. CD34 would stain the dermis. It will stain a kind of bright ring or halo around the edge of the lesion, but the spindle cells in the middle of this lesion will be negative. All you'll see is vessels. So uh, what might this be? Any takers? So this is actually a dermatofibroma. Now this is a, a very juicy, robust example of dermatofibroma, which is why I'm showing it. You know, the, the little kind of atrophic looking collagen rich dermatofibromas that we all see regularly, those don't give anyone problems usually, okay? But on these bigger ones, especially when they push down into the fat and get some fat trapping, people often get very concerned about these because of the fat and they think it might be DFSP. But the thing is this cytology here to me is incompatible with DFSP. I've never seen a DFSP with cells this atypical. Now, there have been extremely rare case reports of, of pleomorphism in DFSP, and I have seen, I take that back, I've seen one DFSP that had been radiated, and it did have a scattered, degenerative, bizarre pleomorphism, presumably from the radiation. But other than that, DFSP, 
translocation sarcoma, has uniform cells. And here in dermatofibromas, also known as benign fibrous histiocytoma, you tend to see scattered atypia commonly. Sometimes it can be pretty pronounced, actually, what people call monster cells, big, bizarre atypia scattered in the middle. But the cells in the dermatofibroma are a lot more plump, have more abundant cytoplasm, they often have scattered nuclear atypia, they often have kind of more prominent mitotic activity. So paradoxically, dermatofibromas look more atypical, actually, cytologically, than DFSP does, even though they're benign. So this is a uh, dermatofibroma that actually is kind of, I think you could classify this as a cellular dermatofibroma because it's got a lot of fascicles. And also because of all the hemosiderin, you can say that it's hemosiderotic or aneurysmal. I, those kind of have overlap. You often see hemosiderin though in dermatofibromas. Sometimes it's very focal, but it's often present. You often see hemorrhage. And uh, again, look for the scattered atypia. Now look, there is some story form here. So even though DFSP, the buzzword story form, I see story form pattern in a variety of things, including dermatofibroma, pretty regularly. And the main thing to make sure you remember about the pitfall is that CD34 will have enhanced strong staining oftentimes at the edge of a dermatofibroma. The way I think about it is that the as the dermatofibroma grows, it pushes like a bulldozer, pushes those CD34 positive dermal uh, dendritic cells out of the way and they kind of pile up at the periphery of the dermatofibroma. So don't let that confuse you. Just look in the middle and if it's wiped out a negative in the middle, that's a good argument against DFSP. Seeing fat necrosis, seeing foamy cells, seeing uh, cystic spaces with blood in them, hemosiderin, all of those are features that point to dermatofibroma and against DFSP. Epidermal hyperplasia is a really common finding in dermatofibroma, but I have seen it uh, occasionally over top of a DFSP. So it's not a totally specific finding, but it is helpful to point towards DF rather than DFSP. And also collagen trapping at the periphery, a very common feature in dermatofibromas, but I have also seen some dermatofibrous sarcomas that had collagen trapping. The, it's subtle, but there is kind of a difference usually in the way it looks. Um, but here you see like kind of big, thick uh, collagen bundles. They're, ret they're basically reticular dermal collagen that's being trapped by the periphery of the tumor, okay? And when there's a lot of atypia in a DF, you can call them atypical fibrous histiocytoma or atypical DF. Um, and Chris Fletcher has written a paper about that that you can read if you want to kind of see some pictures and examples of how much atypia is too much. To me, I would just call this a cellular DF with, some, with hemosiderin or aneurysmal change uh, personally.